My name is Marion Hill. I'm an illustrator and I want to welcome you to my studio uh, for a special Forest of the Imagination beetle and bug collaging workshop. I'm going to be taking you on a tour of my studio, showing you how I work and introducing you to some of the amazing bugs and beetles that are living around you, right under your nose in the city and the surrounding parks and fields. Over the last two years, I heard stories that insects were really struggling to survive and um, the numbers of them were dropping in a worrying way. And I started noticing all the different insects that were living in our little garden and thinking about how I could help them. What I thought would be a really quick project to start illustrating the species that live in my little city garden has turned out to last for well over two years and is in no sign of finishing. Until I started crawling around our tiny garden and really noticing what was living amongst vegetation and under the rocks and stones, I really had absolutely no idea how many amazing creatures were living right under my nose. So I'm going to show you a few of the illustrations I've made. Um, most people will have noticed seven spot ladybirds. They're quite easy to spot because they're bright red and they're uh, quite large as well um, comparatively. They're, so um, when they're flying around, most people do notice these. And they're really good because they clear up green fly from roses and so gardeners really like these little guys. But there's loads more insects hiding out in your garden or out in your yard or green space that you might not have noticed. Okay, so this one is a thick-legged flower beetle. It's beautiful shiny green um, and you'll probably find it this time of year um, on open flowers in your garden or park um, and it's busy eating pollen so it pollinates we think um, some of the flowers so it's a really helpful beetle too. Let's find another one. This amazing looking um, beetle is a rose chaffer and rose chaffers are disliked by some gardeners because they think they eat their rose bushes but um, the rose chaffer also has a really important job helping to compost waste in the garden. So actually, it's a really useful little beetle as well as being really beautiful. Um, let's see what else I've got. And another little insect that's got a slightly bad reputation, but I think it's so beautiful, is a rosemary beetle. Now these guys, they do eat a tiny bit of your lavender bushes or your rosemary bushes, but they don't kill the plant and they only nibble a few, few leaves. So I'm so excited when I find one of these on my lavender or rosemary bush that I would never want to kill it. I'm just really glad it's living in my garden. So um, if you look on the side of the leaves of your lavender or, or rosemary bushes that you find around your homes or in your local neighbourhoods, you'll probably find some of these guys hiding and they're so beautiful and striped um, and the stripes can look almost pink sometimes. What else have we got? Now in the fields that above where I live in Bath, I've found lots of these little guys. These are red and black black frog hoppers and they're about this big and they will be clinging to the side of um, long grasses and when you disturb them they can jump the most extraordinary height. It'd be almost like you could jump to about the sixth floor of a tower block. So they jump higher than you could possibly imagine. They're super cool. So there's lots of different frog hoppers but these are the ones that are easiest to spot because they're such a bright colour. And another black and red one that I really like is a cinnamon bug and this one I've spotted in my garden this week. So they're quite small, they're only about three, four millimetres long, so they're easy to overlook. But look how exotic these guys look. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. So I have collaged, uh, yes, as I said, about a hundred beetles and bugs at the moment, and I've got a massive pile still to do, and I could show you them all day, but there's so many to choose from. So I'm hoping that you'll go out in your garden now and search to see what you can find. I've brought you outside now to our really small city garden, which I have been trying to make the best habitat possible for bugs and beetles. So for about four years now, I've been doing some really simple things um, that seem to have made a really big difference to how many creatures we have living in the garden. So firstly, I stopped mowing our lawn and I've just let the wildflowers grow through. So we've got all kinds of things like um, buttercups and clover, forget-me-nots in the ground that was just the lawn once. 
I've stopped digging the borders because I've realised that lots of organisms live in the soil and if you keep digging the soil you upturn them and really disturb them and they don't like it at all. So I only dig when I absolutely have to. Um, I don't use any weed killers or um, bug sprays on the garden at all. And um, I have things like we have a small pond up here which you can hardly see because it's so overgrown. <laughs> but we've got palmate newts living in there and it's a great place for all kinds of creatures to come and drink. And then I have piles of sticks. Um, I let dead vegetation pile up in corners. We've got lots of dead logs. And behind the bench at the back, we've got a compost bin, which is home to so many mini beasts and slow worms. Um, and just by doing these really simple things, in about four years, we've turned from being um, quite an empty garden to one that's just humming and buzzing and scuttling with insects. And some people might say it's really messy and not like it, but I love coming and sitting out here because I can hear all the insects buzzing away and um, see the garden thriving it makes me really happy. I've really been amazed by some of the things I've learnt during this project. Before I started I had no idea how many forms um, shield bugs can come in. Both these illustrations are of the same blue shield bug. What I didn't realise is that shield bugs as they grow their skin cannot grow with them so when they get too big for one of their coats they just split it down the middle and crawl out looking completely different. Some shield bugs can go through about five or six changes of appearance through their lifetime. So the bug on the left and the right are exactly the same species, just at a different stage in their life cycle. Every time I find a new species of insect, I take photographs of it, sketch it if I can, and do some research. And then I make a collage of it using little bits of snipped paper. Um, what I didn't realise was how many useful jobs bugs and beetles are actually carrying out in our gardens without us even realising. Ladybirds are really good at catching aphids, the little green fly, um, and here is a red soldier beetle who's very good at ca uh, catching caterpillars and um, slugs and snails, as well as pollinating plants and flowers. And then we have ground beetles that also kill slugs and snails. Um, they may live in your compost bin or under rocks and stones because they're quite secretive. We've got dung beetles that process poo. Um, so if they come across a dropping of an animal, they will um, uh, squirrel it away, eat it. And um, at the same time, they'll fertilise the soil. And this one is a sexton beetle, which is a carrion beetle. And it's actually responsible for clearing away carcasses of dead animals by feeding the rotting flesh to its babies. Without all these insects, our um, landscape would be a very different place. And we've got to realise that loads of beetles are our friends and we really need to nurture and protect them. So I've stood up from my desk now and I'm just going to give you a quick tour of how I organise my collage material. Because when you're a collage artist, you do make an awful lot of mess. So people have lots of magazines up here that people have given me to cut up, but also I have these drawers. And so inside all these little drawers, I've got different um, colours and textures. So if we look, I've got a, a green drawer, a background drawer, that means sort of light textures. I've got food uh, and different colours. So if we look in the blue drawer, let's look at the blue drawer. In here, I've just got loads and loads and loads of bits of magazine with lovely blue bits in. And so if I'm collaging, I know that if I need blue, I know which drawer to go to. Um, let's have a look. And then here is a red drawer. There we go. Uh, that was full of, obviously, red. Um, I have a, a drawer for houses. I have a drawer for, for every colour. And that's the way I keep my bits organised so the whole studio doesn't sort of disintegrate into total chaos. And then over here is my desk where I have my glue and my glue brush and all my equipment um, ready for a collage. So, how do you collage a beetle? Well, my kit is really, really simple and I think most of you will have all the equipment you need around your home. I've got a basic craft glue, which is very much like PVA. So PVA will do very well, or you can even use a glue stick to stick your bits of paper down. So I'm going to pour some glue into my dish. Okay. 
Then I have a really cheap glue brush and some water to clean my glue brush out in. And you won't need this if you're going to use just a glue stick because that doesn't require any water at all. There's my glue in a pot. I can move the water away. Then I have scissors to cut my magazine and then a collection of bits of magazine. Now, lots of people give me old magazines because they know how I work. So I've got piles and piles of magazines in my studio waiting to be cut up. It's always a really good idea to ask permission before you start cutting people's books and magazines up. So all the things that I've got are magazines and books that nobody wants anymore. OK, now let's look at the beetle that we're going to illustrate. Mm, well, beetles are insects and insects have certain body parts. So if you're going to collage a beetle, they come in lots and lots of different shapes and sizes and the body parts can vary in colour, pattern and shape. But you'll usually you'll have a head, two antennae here, a thorax and a lytra, which are the wing cases that cover the abdomen of the insect. The wings hide underneath this shell and then the six legs and the legs can come in various numbers of parts. And some insects are hairy and some are smooth and some are shiny and some are rough. Some are thin and some are fat. And there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different insects to choose from. So hopefully you'll go out and search your gardens and uh, green spaces and have a look at what beetles and bugs you can find. And then maybe you can make a collage of one of the insects that you come across on your bug hunts. So I've decided I think I'm going to collage a ladybird. And here's one I made earlier. So I know that I'm going to have a, a lovely red elytra and it's got two spots on the back and then its thorax is black and it's got some white dots on it. Its head is black, it's got two eyes here, antennae and then the six legs. So then I'll go through my magazines and I will try and find the right bits. So let's have a look. I've got this lovely bit of red I found earlier. So this is brilliant for a ladybird, isn't it? So I'm going to cut out... A circle. Now obviously I've got to rush a bit to do this so when I actually make a collage they normally take me a good few hours to do each one. So it's up to you how long you take and there's no right or wrong way to do this. There we go. I think that's too big isn't it? I need to make that smaller. Cut that down a little bit more. That bit's a size. That's a better size isn't it? Okay, so that's the main body part. And can you see there's a split down the middle? There we go. The shell actually comes in two halves. Okay, let's move my picture away now and then we'll start building up the collage. Okay, there we go. So that's the two halves of the wing case. And now I need something shiny. Let's go back. I'm going to search through my pile of paper and see what I can find. Hmm. Right, let's have a look at what we've got here. Okay, I might be able to use something here. I'm going to cut out this bit of black. To make the head section. Let's put that here. Okay. Ah, is that going to be my head or my thorax? Hmm, I'm going to search a little bit more for something else shiny. This is going to be my thorax. So there's my thorax. And then this is going to be my head. I'm going to trim it down a little bit more. So it's going to tuck behind almost. Now, we're going to need some eyes, aren't we? Now, the thing about eyes is, I've found, if you go through food magazine that nobody wants anymore, there's things like pictures of olives or grapes. And they're great for eyes because they've got that shiny little dot on them. So I'm just going to cut an eye out. One. Obviously, I'm doing this much faster than I normally work, so it's a bit messier than my collages on my website and the pictures that you've seen. So if I had longer, then I obviously take great care to cut very carefully. Okay, so let's see another eye. Hmm. Well, how about some antennae? Let's have a look at this one. Well, I think we could use this bit of the same drawing. There we go. I'm gonna. Down a 
grande one side and then we got the other side and don't worry if that's at the start you find collage a bit messy it takes practice it takes practice to get really um, clean cuts and not get glue everywhere what I find is really helpful is as you collage try to keep washing your hands every few minutes if you get in a real sticky mess otherwise the, the glue tends to get absolutely everywhere okay and we're gonna have a go at cutting some legs out here now I've got a fashion magazine here and it's got some nice creases in the fabric which when I cut them out it looks like my ring my legs are really 3d because they've got a shine on one side so you can see that piece okay so this is going to be the leg and Keep remembering to collage under the camera. There we go. There's another one. Should we have a look at the picture again? I'll bring my original back. Can you see? We're going to start building up these leg sections here. And also, I've got to find the white dots and the dots for the back of the insect's back. So let's have a look. I'll try and actually, maybe I can put these next to each other and you can see. That's it. Okay, let's find the white. There's some useful right here in this magazine. So I want two spots on the thorax. One. So if something's curvy, I look for a, a, a photograph of something curvy to cut up. So it does take quite a lot of time sometimes to find all the right little bits and bobs. Now we need two black spots, don't we, for the back. Hmm. There we go, should we use this one? If I turn it over, there's some nice black bits here. So we need two black spots to go on the back. Right. darker red line down the middle. I'm just going to get some dark red. I can use this bit left over from when I cut out the shell case. There we go. And that will go down the middle. There we go. It's coming together now, isn't it? Let's try and find a darker bit of red for the end. Here, let's go back to this fashion magazine again. And there's some dark red there I can use. Middle. I need a little bit more, don't I? There we go. Can you see it's starting to build up? Now, normally I'd stick this as I go, but I think the video will go on for so long you'll get bored. So I'm going to stick this all down later. There we go. And then we need some more legs, don't we? I've lost that leg under the dot. There we go. One. Right, let's see how fast I can cut legs. So this is not going to be the, the neatest things I've ever done. So it gives you the idea. We go one. One. Two. There we go. And two more down here. There was a slightly longer part. bit is to do the little extra jointy bits here so let's see how my careful cutting is under speed let's do some extra bits there we go and joint go along like that can you see how it's starting to build into an insect so when you're happy with all your bits that's when you get the glue out and you stick it all down it's so simple and I love magazines because they come in such bright shapes and colours and 
um, all kinds of textures on the photographs that I can use and it costs me hardly anything to make my work because I'm using things that other people want to throw away which is really good as well isn't it because we all need to recycle as much as possible and there we go I'd love to see the work that you make after this workshop so um, at the end maybe we could put a link in and, and then if you want to take a photo and upload your work or email it that would be absolutely wonderful there we go so you give you the idea rough idea um and so i would love you to all go out and try and see if you can find a beetle see if you can work out what name is the beetle and then collage the beetle afterwards and if you get stuck on working out what sort of beetle it is and you've got a smartphone you can get an app called the iNaturalist app and you can take a photo of the beetle you find upload it to the app and there'll be experts waiting to try and help you work out what it is you found well there's lots of different guides i've just made a what to spot in the summer guide there we go and this will be um, on the Bathscape website soon and then you can download it and you can go bug hunting over the summer this is lots and lots of different insects to spot okay good luck quality and i can't wait to see what you do